Okay, 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 finally it's happening. What? As I said earlier on this video, if the video get 2.5k likes, I would make a detailed explanation video about graphs on a light motion for beginners right after. Well, the video already hit 2.5k likes three months ago. Anyways, before I start talking about graphs, remember, not only in a light motion, these graphs apply in every editing software. Before using graphs, you need to know keyframes, because without keyframes, you can't use graphs. So, what are keyframes? Keyframes basically are markers you place on the timeline to control your object's properties, like how an object's position, size, rotation, and opacity change over time. Didn't understand? Let's see with an example. So I'm in a light motion and this is my layer. To add keyframes, go to the Move and Transform option. From here you can add keyframes. Let's say I want to do a move animation of this thing from here to here. For that, you need to add two keyframes. First keyframe at the start, and the second keyframe at the end like this. Now to animate this thing, you need to change the second keyframe's position value like this. As you can see, the X position value changes from keyframe 1 to keyframe 2, so the object moves horizontally. X means horizontal, and Y means vertical. The same with zoom in and out. We add two keyframes like this and scale the value of only one keyframe like this. And that's it. Moving to the next part, which is animation flow. That means how a motion will flow between two keyframes. And there are three major graphs we use. Ease in, ease out, and ease. First is ease in. It starts slow and then gets fast. It speeds up motion smoothly. Next is ease out, which is the reverse of ease in. It starts fast and ends with slow motion. And finally ease. It creates the best flow by combining both ease in and ease out. It starts with slow, gets fast in the middle, and slows down again at the end. All this graphs available in a light motion. Now let's see them with an example. I added this shape layer here. Now I go to move and transform and move the position to the left side like this. To animate it, I add two keyframes at the start and end, and move it like this. If I play this, you can see it's animating in linear motion. Now to make it even cool, we go to the graph option. Here you will see the preset graphs I talked about earlier. I choose any of those presets and boom, it's applied in between our two keyframes. You can adjust them by using these two handles, which gives us full control to make a custom animation curve. But before you start using custom graphs, you need to have some knowledge about the graph editor. So basically, this upper and lower parts of this graph box are for slow motion, and the left and right sides are for fast motion. Didn't understand? Okay, let me explain. When I move this handle upward like this, you see most of the handle is on the fast side. When I move the second handle to the left side, most of the second handle is on the slow side. So according to this graph, at first this car will move super fast, and then slow down. Let's take another example. Let's say I added this ease graph. You can see at first the handle is on the slow side, and the second handle is also on the slow side, which means the center movement will happen fast. Now if I move this handle slightly more into slow side, you can see most of it is in slow. At this point, this line is also near fast, so the movement will happen like slow, little fast, then slow again. If you still didn't understand, bro, maybe you're a fanboy. But if you understood, there's more for you. If you enable the overshoot option, then your graph handles can go beyond the borders, and you can make bounce back movement graphs, like this, which give extra impact. But these things aren't important for basic animation. All of this also applies in rotation, scaling, and skew. And besides these graphs, there are more graphs you can use to make smooth and advanced animations. Okay, now let's make a character move animation. I drag this character to the left side, then move my playhead to one second and add one keyframe in position and one keyframe in rotation. Now I go back to zero seconds and slide my character down like this. Also rotate it a little bit.
Now I add an ease graph on both position and rotation. And when I play it, you can see how smoothly it comes in. Next, I add two more keyframes in layer and move the position of last key like this. Add Ease Graph on it and make a graph like this. Now bring the playhead to the center of this two keyframes and click back. Now duplicate this layer by clicking on this option. Then go to the duplicate layer, select Color and Fill, and replace it with another asset. So I added another character. Now select your main layer and cut the right side of the layer. Then select the copy layer and cut the left side of the layer. Now go to effects and add motion blur to both layers. If your duplicate layer doesn't fit perfectly, then go to color and fill and select the fit option. Then go to move and transform and increase the scale like this. Done. And here's the final output. So this is a basic explanation of how graphs work in a light motion, or even in any app. If you watch the full video, don't forget to like it. And if you don't know anything about a light motion, then watch this video to understand the basic features of a light motion. I'll see you in the next video within a week.